Hi, my name is Steve Earhart. Welcome to my channel. Uh, in this video, we're going to be making a silver pendant from art clay silver, metal clay, um, and we're going to set a garnet stone into it. Okay, I'm going to start by taking a small piece of silver clay and kneading it. Now, this this piece of clay has been open a couple of days, so um, I'm just going to start by rolling it out quite thinly. Um, and then I'll spritz it with a bit of water. That just gets a bit more hydration into the clay, makes it a bit easier to work, stops any little surface cracking. Um, I've already got some, uh, the cool slip, um, or cool slick, however you say it, uh, <coughs> lubricant on my hands and on the roller, um, and a tiny bit just wiped over the, um, the piece of Teflon there. So I've rolled it out pretty thin. I'm just gonna give it a couple of, couple of squirts with a bit of just clean fresh water um, wait a couple of seconds and then uh, start to fold it in on itself uh, so you just want to try and encapsulate as much of that water as you can within the clay um, and then just knead it back together again with your fingers um, you will get a little bit of the clay on your fingers there as it as it gets a bit damp but uh, you just want a nice soft consistency that's not sticking to your fingers um, and not cracking when you when you fold it or roll it. Uh, just picking up a couple of little tiny pieces there with my finger. Okay, so just a little test, um, and I think that's starting to look a lot better. Um, I think perhaps do just need to put a bit more water on that just to get a little bit more so just another little spray and then I'm just going to do the same again fold it in on itself uh, try and keep as much of the water within the clay as I can and not squeezing out uh, give it a knead That's starting to look much better now, much softer, um, easier to work and no cracking in the surface. Okay, so using the um, spacers and roll it out to a thickness, I think it's about a millimetre thick, those spacers, just turn it um, and roll again. And I put the spacers on top of the Teflon work surface because I want the, the spacers to measure the thickness of the clay, nothing else. And I'm going to use this stamp with some writing on there, uh, it's a lovely stamp. Uh, one of the things I've learned with this is not too deep an impression, keep the impression quite shallow. Um, so fairly gently press it in, you don't want it too deep. Uh, just squeeze around um, and then lift. Um, and again, the, the stamp has already had some of this cool slick applied to it. So uh, otherwise you'll uh, your clay will get stuck in there. Okay, so that's... Um, that's okay I think now uh, so what I'm going to do now is um, <clears throat> get a cutter um, I've got a heart shaped cutter here um, and I'm just trying to arrange it over the piece of clay to try and get as much of the uh, as the pattern the writing as I can and get it into um, get it to look nice and then when I'm happy I just press down and peel away the clay from the outside. Um, again, I have got some of the um, the lubricant on there. Uh, you can also use Badger Balm; that works just as well, uh, as well. Um, and then you want to just uh, roll up the clay that you're not using and get it straight back in the cling film to to stop it drying out. And then you just want to gently push the clay out from from within the cutter. Uh, you don't want to leave any dints in the surface, so be really gentle at this stage because the clay is quite soft. A 
Okay. Okay, now I'm going to make a bezel for the garnet cabochon. Um, I'm using some three millimeter uh, fine silver bezel wire. Uh, and I'm just going to use the, the base part of the round nose pliers, which uh, seems to work pretty much spot on for that size uh, garnet. I'm just going to measure it up there just to make sure that seems a pretty good fit just tighten it slightly um, <clears throat> haven't got any wire cutters on hand so I'm just gonna bend the um, silver to break it off not the recommended approach but it it does work okay it's the final bit of shaping around the garnet and then it'll be ready to um, put into the into the wet clay I think best practice actually is to do that before you shape the clay because the clay is obviously drying all the time now but I forgot to do that uh, so I'll move the garnet off to one side and there's the bezel I'm just using the pliers or some tweezers just find where you want to put it and then gently press it in You either need to remove a bit of the clay from the inside or make sure that it's sticking up enough to to bend over the um, over the cabochon you can see that it's sticking up a little way so it'll be fine for what we want and I'm just going to build up around the the bezel with some of the paste type silver so this is pretty much the first jar of paste type I ever bought about <laughs> about 15 years ago um, and I just keep keep putting the uh, the, the filings and, and bits and pieces that just dried bits and pieces and occasionally if I've got a small piece that hasn't worked out as I like it I just break it up and stick it in there so um, it's a 10, 10, 10 gram pot but I bet there's about 50 grams of silver in there at the moment um, so just working around carefully with a cocktail stick um, just trying to just make make sure that that bezel's really firmly set. I mean, the the clay will shrink around it <clears throat> to make a nice solid connection as you as you as you um, fire it. But but I, I like the uh, like the aesthetic of just building it up slightly as well uh, with a bit of paste. So trying to get. It, trying to get it as smooth as I can at this stage um, obviously I can smooth it further when uh, when it's sort of in the greenware state when the clay's dry with some sandpaper um, and then some refinement obviously once uh, once it's fired as well but the uh, the more you do the the more you do the earlier you do it the easier it is to do so you just get it as uh, as good as you can at each stage so I think that that's basically done um, and now just to create the hole for the uh, the jump ring to go in I'm just using a really small straw um, just find the spot and as you put it in just give it a twist I'm just going to give it a spray with some cool slick just to just to make sure that it doesn't stick and doesn't uh, ruffle the clay too much I think that's done okay so that's dried off uh, now it's time to give it a bit of a sand so um, it's dry it's a bit less prone to damage than it was when it was um, soft clay uh, but it's still really soft so you need to be really gentle with it uh, that's a 120 grit um, sanding pad um, and I've also got a 240 
and a one eight a one a one twenty, one eighty and a two forty. Um most of the sanding I do is gonna be at the one twenty. Uh taking care not to file away any of the pattern. Um but I do just want to make sure the edges aren't aren't sharp, um any bits of sort of moulding marks, just get rid of those. A bit of shaping around the bezel, um just where the uh you know where the uh the, the paste has dried. Um and just try to uh, get it as close to the final shape uh, as I can. Um, but I think uh, it, it it was pretty good actually this one for for what I wanted. Um, I mean I do like a fairly sort of organic shape anyway, so I don't want it too perfect. Um, but it's um, I think we're just a bit more there around the bezel. I think we're pretty close. Okay. Let's call that done. And time to uh time to fire it. Let's just zoom in a little bit so you can see a little bit more closely. Um, I often kiln fire, but this one I'm just going to torch fire it. Uh, so I've got a fairly sort of standard butane torch. Um, it's a bit aggressive, the, the flame on it. I only need a fairly small flame for this, so just turn it back as, as far as it'll go, really. Um, that, that should be fine. So you want you don't want the room too bright when you do this because you you're going to be looking for a sort of a a pinky pinky orange glow. Um, if it gets too, you can melt the silver um, if you if you go too aggressive here. So you you just want to get a sort of a pinky orange glow, sort of salmon pink glow. Um, it will be quite difficult to see on the screen, but. But we'll, we'll see how we get on. So what you see there is the flame where the binder's burning off. Um, and this is where most of the uh, shrinkage occurs with the clay. Um, I've I've watched over and over again and I can never see it happen, but you, <laughs> you can measure the difference. Um, so yeah, and it's uh, starting to glow, I think, just almost... Yeah, so you want to measure, once you get that glow going, you want to time for about three minutes. I tend to go a little bit over. You can see there you've got that nice glow. Um, and if the room's a bit darker, then, then you know, you get a right nice deep sort of ready orange glow. <clears throat> if it gets too orange, then you're in danger of melting the, uh, melting the silver, so don't go too, don't go too mad. Um, and you want to keep it as close to the same temperature as you can for the three minutes uh, by moving the flame in and out, maybe move to a slightly colder part of the flame to try and sort of keep it warm but not um, but not melted. You will find as it starts to sinter that, that it probably will misshape, it'll probably curl up around the edges um, but just hold your nerve uh, and it will settle back down usually within that three minute period um, if it is a bigger piece slightly bigger piece then maybe just give it a little bit longer but they do say three minutes should be enough um, I don't think it centers quite as well when you torch firing as it does when you use the kiln um, but to be honest I've never had a problem I never had a problem with it that's gone a little bit cool really just needs a bit, bit more of a concentrated flame to get it back that's it um yeah so just keep going um keep that color going i'll uh, i'll leave the camera running in real time and then you can just see it feels like an age when you when you're doing it it does feel like a long time but it is only three minutes yeah just keep that flame going backwards and forwards and forwards 
definitely seems longer than three minutes. It's very satisfying though. I love watching that glow. I love watching the uh, the clay turn into silver, even though you don't you don't see the silver metal um, color uh, until afterwards when you've uh, when you've started doing the finishing, the burnishing, and and stuff. I think we're getting pretty close to the end of the three minutes now. Just a few more seconds. You just got to keep trying to maintain that that glow. and we're done so uh, now just get some water if you have, if you have a little pot of water on hand and uh, with some pliers because even though it doesn't look hot anymore it is still very hot uh, just carefully pick it up and drop it into the water and you get a bit of a, a, a fizz as the water boils around it uh, and actually it's just stuck itself to the bottom of the plastic there but it's okay uh, you're probably better off using a, a pottery you know a, a, a normal mug rather than a plastic pot um, no harm done though and there we have it uh, just be careful if you touch your fire brick it be very hot where the flame's been for a while um, so it's all it's silver now it's sintered um, <clears throat> But it still looks white, and that's because the particles of silver are all basically sticking straight up. Um, and to get that reflective silver colour, we need to uh, we need to flatten them down. And we can do that either by brushing it with a wire brush, a brass wire brush, which is what I'm going to use there, or by uh, burnishing it with a burnisher. Um, and I'll demonstrate that in a second as well. Um, so you can start to see that silver colour appear um, as, the, as it flattens it only takes a few seconds probably see it easier on the back there you go just about two or three swipes and you get that nice satin silver colour uh, from the brush um, it's fine to hold it in your hand when you're doing that it doesn't it doesn't hurt the brass brush probably don't go too brisk with it but it's uh, it, it's not painful or anything it's fine uh, and this is a burnisher this is you can get metal burnishers you can even use the back of a spoon uh, but this is an agate burnisher um, and it's just a very hard stone you just um, just gently rub it on the surface or I say gently you can be quite firm actually what you're trying to do is press down the metal uh, press down the silver particles to get a nice um, a nice shine going and then, you know you, you just rub it and you want to just sort of try and get the, a nice flat part of the burnisher on there really create a nice flat piece um, it's really great for the edges you get a really nice nice shine around the edges Right, so what I want to do here is to create a patina on the silver. What I want to do really is darken um, darken the pattern that we created at the beginning with that stamp. Uh, so I've got a mug of hot water there and I'm just going to add a couple of drops of liver of sulphur. Um, I mean, I think I'll literally only add two drops. It, it'll happen a bit quicker if you, if you add three or four drops, but you don't need loads. Uh, two drops will will do it and you can see there um, how quickly uh, it's darkening um, you get that really nice patina developing you can leave it you can stop it actually well, you know it goes through a range of colors and some people like it when you stop it um, with like a rainbow effect 
on the on the metal um i have to say my preference is to let it go quite dark and and use it to create a really nice contrast um where you've got the pattern that's been pressed into the metal you or pressed into the piece using the the stamp at the beginning um when it gets to the color that you that you're happy with to stop the process you literally just want to um plunge it into into cold water uh, it's a bit whiffy it's called liver of sulfur and you can definitely smell the sulfur um so yeah you can just uh, carefully tip tip it away and and uh and 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 just run the piece under cold under the cold tap will uh, will stop the process once you're happy that you've gone far enough um as i say the the smaller amount that you put in the slower the reaction is so if you do want those fancy fancy colors just use probably literally one drop um and let the let the process take its time uh, so yeah i've just dunked it into some cold water there because uh, I'm not not near the sink, but yeah, just run it under the tap, just put it there. It's fine. And you can see we've got that nice, nice really dark colour. Um, and then what I'm going to do is in a minute I'm going to I'm going to sand that back to or polish it back to get a nice silver um, colour again. You can see how it's uh, how it's oxidised and gone nice and dark in the liver of sulphur. Right, time to give it a polish. Um, and uh, I'm trying these little polishing wheels on my Dremel. I've never used them before. Um, <clears throat> they're in various grits. I think this one's 120 or 180. Um, and they go up to 1,000 grit in different colours. Um, so, yeah, so it's just... Uh, they're just like little flap wheels with a, with a, uh, a, a bit of uh, sandpaper or polishing compound on I'm not quite sure how it works but yeah you just uh, just gently hold them over the surface um, and they it polishes up really nicely I'm, I'm quite impressed with them actually uh, yeah so you can see there you know you get get a nice patina they don't they, they don't go night they don't go into the uh, too far into the into the pattern um, but they are strong enough just to do a bit of final shaping and very gently sort of shape if there's any little nicks or thing or blemishes that you just want to gently work away um, yeah they seem to work quite well get right into the nooks and crannies there get right into the into the the, the piece of the heart there it is still worth doing the burnishing uh, beforehand because uh, where the where the metal's burnished, it's much easier to polish off the um, the patina. But yeah, you can see that's that's working pretty well. Um, so I'm just going to do that. I'm going to work up through the grits um, and then give it a final polish. So almost forgot. It's time to set the stone. So I've got a, a garnet cabochon. Um, just making sure that we get it right to the the base of the setting there. Um, and then um, I'm just using a pair of round nose pliers. It's probably not the best way of doing it, to be honest. Uh, but you just need to push the the bezel over the top of the stone just to just to get it to hold in nice and tightly. Um, just yeah, just carefully squeeze it round um, a bit more carefully than I just did there because I've just knocked it out again. Uh, I'm just gonna just clean out the the setting a little bit. So here goes attempt number two. Um, just cleaned it out a little bit. Set the uh, put the garnet in the setting. Um, make sure it's nice and centered. I'm just going to tap it down gently again. And then just give it a squeeze. Uh, 
just a gentle squeeze down and a squeeze all around. Sorry, I've just gone off the screen a little bit there. That's it. And just squeeze it around. And hopefully that's got it. gonna just give it another just gentle push with the burnisher um, and just burnish it just burnish it as well just in case there's any little marks come from the pliers I think that's got it. Okay, time to carry on uh, going through the grits with the uh, with the sander and uh, and to give it a polish. Yeah, just. Um, those little uh, those little discs are really cool. I'm really pleased with them. And just follow it, polishing out just a tiny little blemish there from the from the players. So that's it. We're done. Um, I mean, I'm not desperately happy with the with these photos. The uh, the in real life, it looks much shinier and much 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 nicer. Um, so yeah, really really pleased with them actually. Um, hope this hope this was some help. And uh, please uh, subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more. Thank you very much.